What's up guys, welcome back, episode number 6 of the EAFC career mode, my goodness, no wins in 5, dragged back down into the relegation scrap, just 2 points off Wolves in 18th place, January window's opening today, we've only scored 13 goals all season long, you know I've got to buy a striker. Before we get there though, 2 games left in December and Lord knows we need a win with none in our last 5, starting off with the Blades away, Bramwell Lane, and due to fitness problems, I've got to change my entire lineup. And for the first time ever, go four at the back. Yep, 4-2, 3-1 for the first time ever. I have always preferred four at the back. Call me a traditionalist, call me outdated, call me a dinosaur, whatever. At the end of the day, I've always preferred four at the back systems. To me, three at the back, I think in FIFA, is very hard to play. Because your wide midfielders at times can be far too out of position to contribute on defense. And again, five at the back, well, you've seen my form this year. It's been nothing to write home about. So maybe changing to my preferred four at the back system might be the way forward here. i tell you what we could do as well. I think we need like an ace up our sleeve, you know. Like we, we are struggling so much to get the goals. We should at this point be trying anything. Like Rory Delap long throws, you know, definitely a a anything we can do to give ourselves a chance of putting that ball in the back of the net. It's a good set piece, that, to be fair, and cleared away. Yeah, set pieces, giant throw-ins. I think we should be trying them. Stoke City survived in the Premier League, and that was one of the reasons why. You know, that absolutely... Oh, threw teams off. You know, quite literally. Whereas, we don't have a giant throw-in taker, but I'm certainly going to be in the market for one as Chong heads just over. Because right now, we can't seem to score anyhow. Did end our uh, goalless run against Newcastle, if not the uh, winless run. So that was something positive. Starting to find our feet a little bit. And in this game as well, starting off really strong. Can I find Chong running through there? Almost. And right now, the blades are, are kind of stuck in their own half. So, it's been a good start, but... It's, it's all well and good starting games off strong, but we need goals as well. It's coming. It's coming. There we go. There we go. Take your time. Take your time. One final chance for the half. Oh. And I'll tell you one thing. Before January, I think I'm giving this guy a contract extension. Fourth of the year. For Boss Barkley. Finally that chance is taken. Problem is... Oh, brilliant pressure there. That we just don't take enough of those chances. Glad to get the opener, but really... We should be further in front. We should be three goals up. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic performance. But, you know, we know that our opponents, they only need the one chance. And they'll get a goal. Whereas, obviously, we take several, but can only get one at best. Look at this, Sheffield United look absolutely trapped right now. Even when they do get into our half, it's just marginal gains. At the moment, we've got them absolutely penned, and they cannot escape. It's it's brilliant. This is this is what we've got to do. Stay high, stay high. Don't be conservative. Just let them come through because they only need the one chance. You know it. I knew it. We all knew it. Three straight games without a loss, but still searching for that first win after nine in six. It should have been this one, man. Should have been this one. Half full of chances, only took the one. In the end, we're punished for it. I'll take the point, but it should have been all three. So halfway through the season, officially, 19 games in, um, Man City going for a record. 18 wins in 19 games and only the one draw. That is, that is mental. And obviously on the bottom end, as you'll see, we are crawling away from the drop zone ever so slowly, ever so slightly. We've now extended the gap on Wolves to three points. Still the lowest scorer is only 14 goals on the board. But, hey, listen, if we do finish 17th coming the end of the season, I don't care if we don't score another goal between now and at the end of the year. I'll, I'll still take it. Final game before the window opens. Final chance for some of my players to prove they shouldn't be sold. Chelsea at home. We actually beat them with a bridge, if you remember. First points of the season, 3-2 away in West London. But still got fitness issues going into the game. So not too confident there. But you know what? Once again, I will take another point in our fourth straight. Because it would mean we're still above the bottom three going into January. I'll have to draw every day of the week. Let's play devil's advocate for a second, right? If we were to draw... Every single game between now and the end of the season. That's an extra 19 points on the board. 
And that would mean we end up with a grand total of, I think, 37 points. Which really, you would think, would probably be enough. So, hypothetically, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say we should be playing for nil nils every single game. But, I mean, if the opportunity arises, then I'll definitely be considering it. Yeah, I think you, you got to be very honest about these things. With, oh, what a ball. Oh my god. <laughs> We're not going to win that many games this season, so a draw is a good result in any of them. I've just been absolutely done in by Nonny. Watch this on the replay if you didn't see this initially. First of all, it's amazing, but look at this. Yeah, see you later, mate. He's just out of Fox 3 players. <laughs> Why can't I do that? Does anyone know of, like, a, uh, a giant throw-in specialist in this year's game? If you do, could you leave his name in the comments? Because I feel like anything we can do to give us a chance of getting a rare goal from a, a half... Oh, man. Oh, not this guy again. Oh, he's tearing me open, man. He's tearing me open. Oh, man, look at that. Like, even, even when he do try and make the tackle, it just doesn't seem to... Well done, Keeps. It doesn't seem to end up in your possession, you know? It's just not strong enough. Ten minutes into the second half, I think a third goal is coming. We are really struggling out there tonight. Yes, there we go, there we go, there we go. Come on, chance here, chance here, chance here. That's a cracking ball, that. Barkley, through again. Give him that contract extension. I think it's too late, but that's uh, two and two for the boss man of five. For the, he's, he's our top scorer now, Barkley. Well, got ourselves a goal late on, so finally starting to put the ball in the back and it a bit more consistently. But now no wins in our last seven games heading into January. I'm starting to get very, very worried now. This transfer window is going to be really, really crucial. Ah, and uh, I've just seen we've got our third round draw for the FA Cup. It is against Birmingham City in the Championship, so... Should uh, should have a comfortable chance of at least making it through there. You know, one thing I am doing right now for those curious is I've given a new scout instruction uh, to look for players on free agents. So basically, uh, for those curious, I won't edit this one just in case it resets. But basically, if you want to look for like players you can sign on pre-contracts with their deals expiring come the end of the year, it's very simple. Um, it's up to you whether you want to set any of these yourselves. But normally I go with first team quality. But the key is just changing the max years contract left to one. Very simple, obviously. And then for the age, you can have the max age anyone, but for the minimum age, players have to be 23 or older for you to be able to poach them away on pre contracts However, I like to do it at 22, just in case they turn 23 in January. So yeah, players that are 23 or older with one year left on their deal can be signed on free transfers. And that is how I set my scouts up to look for those players available on pre-contracts in January. So here we go. Uh, January is indeed here. Uh, we do see that Gabriel is going to go and join Bologna. He can't have gone now, though. He... He's, st he's still on the contract. He can't have gone now. Surely not. What? He still had six months. What? How, how is that possible? That's not. That's not possible. That 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 shouldn't be possible. So basically, I didn't include this in the last episode, but basically, Bologna decided to approach him on a pre-contract, but. A pre-contract is just that. It means that the club will take over at the end of his contract. He can't leave now. That's not allowed. You can't do that. You can't go before your contract is up. That makes no sense. How has he just left? We haven't got any money for it. That's ridiculous. His contract doesn't expire in January. It expired come the end of the season. And he's just said, no, I'm going now. That's not allowed. That's not even legal. Why should we be taking this guy to court? You can't do that. He's not giving us any extra money in the transfer budget or anything. No, we didn't get any transfer fees for that. That's just ludicrous. You can't do that. That's ridiculous, man. I'm fuming. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's only played a handful of games for me this season. With our small squad, with Giles injured, with the 
fitness problems we've had. That is ridiculous. You can't do that. That's not allowed. I can't believe it. This is the most difficult start to a save I have ever had. That is unbelievable. I can't believe what I've just seen. That's, that's just stupid. EA, come on, man. That's not legal. So far from Scotland, nobody looking great. Apart from this guy, to be fair, Jack Neal. Overall shocking, though, which means the potential probably isn't great. I'll put him in the first team and see what the overall is, but the potential with that, that market valuation is probably very low. Yeah, I haven't got very high hopes for him. Joel Cox is definitely looking our best right now at CM. Um, but other than that, again, Evans could be pretty decent, but still the overall is quite low. I can't, sorry guys, I can't get over that. I promise I'll stop complaining about it now, because out of my hands, can't do anything now, but that is ludicrous. So just before we deal with transfers, uh, really quickly, I'm going to do this. Now we have a five-star coach all across the board in Joseph Pearson. And because I'm noticing that getting five-star goalkeeping coaches is basically, well, for us, impossible, I'm going to move him to the goalkeeping unit. So that way we can get quicker development for our young lads. And I'm going to see if I can hire a new five-star attacking coach. No, there is a four-star, but uh, Jack Jones, that's a throwback. I'm going to put him in the team anyway. So right before I pick up third round tie against Birmingham, uh, we do see here a bid for Corley Woodrow. Leeds United in a challenge it right now. I want to take him to Ellen Road to help boost their promotion bid. And I'm just going to accept it right off the bat. Barely play for me this season. I want a new striker, so we don't need as many as we've got. I'm okay accepting that. And Girona want to loan Jacob Andrew, our young goalkeeper. I have got him on a loan list, but I wouldn't say that's too realistic, personally. So I'm going to wait for a Football League side to come in. This time with Shiktas. As... Oh, now this is an interesting one. Norwich have put a bid in for Corley Woodrow. So that that's very interesting because they've got Josh Sargent, who we want. So maybe we could do a little switchy-switchy with the Canaries there. I'll accept that bid. I'll leave it up to Cooley. He can go where he wants. But if Norwich aren't too keen on Josh Sargent, we'll take him. And yep, he's turned down the move to Leeds. So that deal to Norwich is still on. But the question is, will he accept that one? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, still not getting the realistic loan offers for our other, back, our other youth goalkeeper. But uh, Ted, who came in at the start of the season, he's barely played for us this season and had the injury as well. Ross County on a two-year loan deal. I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to accept that. He needs the game time, this young lad. Right, following game, FA Cup third round. Desperately need a win after none in our last seven and a golden chance here. Mid-table challenger side, Birmingham City coming to Kenilworth Road. This has to be a banker. Oh, what a ball that is. What a ball that is. And this could be one. And, oh, Kaminsky, massive save. But a veteran back in. Going to play his way back into the team. Mate, away you go, away you go, down that right, going near teammate here, out of bios in the middle, Chong, don't stop running, mate. Because look what's there, space. Oh, why did he go with his right, his left foot, and I shaped for him to shoot on the, on the left. Man, I just cannot get it sorted with this guy. Here we go, here we go. Oh, finish. Gold out over for Adebayo, finally, Luton in front. E finally, back to winning ways. It is an FA Cup third round tie at home against the Challenger side, but you know what, we'll take any win we can get. Clean sheet, victory, and into the fourth round. We've also scored in all of our last four games now, and oh, there we go. There we go, so Cordy Woodrow has gone to Norwich. I think that paves the way for us to go after Josh Sargent then. Another loan offer for Jacob Andrew, which I'm going to turn down as well. But yeah, I mean, if, you know, if, if obviously, you know, Norwich clearly don't rate Josh Sargent and they want a new striker instead, then surely they'll be looking to offload the one they've got. Because, like, Josh Sargent isn't the only striker they've got. They've got other options up top as well. So if we look at Norwich's team and just look at the attack right now, whoops, just look at the attack right now. I mean, Woodrow joins Ashley Barnes, veteran, Huang Weijo, their youngster Adam Ida as well, and of course the guy we've been scouting, Josh Sargent. So, if they're brought in Woodrow for more firepower, that's five strikers. You don't need five. Yep, let's do it. Josh Sargent. I said it was going to be between him and Daryl Dyke, but if Norwich are going to take our striker, we'll take theirs. And to be fair, look at that as well. That's so interesting. Their asking price is five mil, but that's his market valuation, and we can get him for under that. 
I mean, if he's a good young striker, they wouldn't send him for the cheap like this. They don't rate him. They want to get rid. Let's go with the £4 million bid initially and see what Norrie say to that. And they say no, but they want Mads Anderson, who we're not really using, to be fair. However, he has only just signed, so not quite realistic, I'd say. Let's go 4.25 mil. Look at it in the top right as well. No tension at all, which means that clearly Norwich want to get him off the books. They're not too fussed if it's under devaluation. I'm going to remove that sell-on clause, up it to 4.25. Clearly, they don't rate the American, but we definitely do. Cool, he's going to go to Carrow Road. Sergeant is coming to Kenilworth Road. Oh my god, EA. Like, what is... <laughs> 90 pounds, guys. 90 pounds. Come on, EA. Sort these bugs out, yeah? So many in this game already. Right, five-year deal, 25 grand a week. Josh Sargent is in to replace Cooley Woodrow. And have his old number as well, at number 10. And at 23 years old, i got to say, I'm... Um, I'm hopeful. I'm really, really hopeful. I don't know how much better he can get at 74 rated, but he already becomes our highest rated forward in this team. I love the fact he's got the high, high work rates, the relentless speciality as well. He's strong, amazing stamina, really physical striker, quite quick as well. I, I'm i quite excited about this young man. I, th I think he's got all the assets to become our top scorer. Ah, that's a bit more realistic to be fair though. Uh, Rangers want to take Jacob Andrew on a loan deal. Loan deal to buy. I'm going to delegate that and try and get rid of the, uh, the buy option. But uh, two years at I rocks out, toughen him up there in Glasgow, I'd say. And uh, Mengi looks as though he's on his way to Ross County, also in the Scottish Premier League as well. So I don't mind that. I'd rather football league sides, but Scottish Premier League sides is also quite realistic as well, I'd say. Right, let's do one more game. Fourth and final one. Basement battle. I love these clashes. We're in the bottom three heading into this game at Turf Moor, but Burnley are rock bottom. So only a win will take us out of the relegation zone. But if we lose this, I think we're in deep trouble. Massive game to end on. Come on, you hatters. Yes, Barkley. Well done, mate. Well done. And now Sergeant. Oh, great footwork there by the American making his debut. Up top, Hanu number 10. And he's a very physical striker, as we know. He's, he's asking for it as well. But it's Pelly Radakumpantu from non-league to Premier League gets his first goal in the top tier. What a start at Turf Moor. That's yours, mate. That's yours every day of the week. Yes, Sambi. Brilliant stuff. And again, we're going from right to the middle. Barkley! Ross Barkley does it again. Top scorer with another Luton tuning up on the Clarets. It's amazing what ending a dry spell can do to your confidence, isn't it? It really is amazing. That win against Birmingham. And we're looking at a different team out there now. Murich denies Sargent a debut goal, but we've been on fire in the first half. Luton finally playing a bit of confidence. We haven't seen this in a long time, mate. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Sergeant could be through there. It's a Johnny Evans to Bruno Fernandez-esque move. And I think we just want a penalty, you know. Because that seemed to strike an arm. It's not a penalty, but it is a free kick. I did think there was a hand raised there. And a charge on his set piece. Now, for new viewers, I cannot score free kicks to save my life. So don't expect much here. But you never know. Considering Barkley's form, you wouldn't rule him out. It's great! Ross Barkley has made it free! He's been on absolute fire! Turning back the clock today, Ross Barkley. That new contract, mate, is in the post. He's been on absolute flames. Two goals and an assist for the 30-year-old. Luton's best performance of the year. And we save it for the biggest game so far. Sorry, Vinny, I think you're going down. Where, where's this been? But where is where this Luton Town being, honestly? Right, careful, careful. We want the clean sheet for the kid as well. We're not going to get it. Okay, all right, don't capitulate now. Don't capitulate. Clean sheet's gone. Okay, fair enough. But we're still up two by two with half an hour to go. Don't don't throw this away. That is going to do it. Win of the season, and it's not even close. Played Burnley off the park and got a free kick goal for good measure as well. Barkley's sensational season continues. And for Luton, finally, a Premier League win 
after none in our last seven, I think it was. What a big three points to end on. And I'll do it, guys. So massive thank you for watching today's chaotic episode of Career Mode. Man, this one had everything. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please do drop a like. You'll have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of the EAFC Career Mode with Luton Town at the bottom three very soon.